New York City is a playground for the single guy. Look at this place. It's the perfect place to play the game. I don't see anything wrong with sleeping with girls that I have no long-term interest in. I'm more selective about whom I have dinner with than whom I have sex with. On a good week, I'm probably having 10, 15 dates. I've slept with uh, 130, 132 women. I've had sex in New York City cab, and the guy reached back and touched her, so they get in their jollies off too. A lot of my game centers around not wasted financial resources. I don't even take girls out. I meet them on the street, and I invite them back to my place. If I'm attracted to the girl, and the end game is to, to be physical, I want them in a controlled environment where I can escalate it into a, a sexual scenario. Now I'm here with the Casanova cam to see how it works. I'm hoping to capture some street game today. It's nice, kind of like a bra here. My main goal today is to meet a dozen upwards women, get their phone numbers. Well, I've been a good player. Is I've just got to get into the vibe. I'm almost 6'1". I've got like a swimmer's build. I'm happy with my looks and my physique. I'm healthy. I always keep a little bit of scruff. I'm never clean shaven. Women respond a lot to facial hair, I found. They like to touch it and it's manly. They know that there's a big sexual component to our medium. I need to keep well hydrated. We got a cliff bar. It's perfect fuel for a running street game. Women say I'm intense. It scares them off or turns them on. My eyes are like beams. Like if I see a girl, she sees that eye connection, she knows it's on. It's like, and then it's just like lock on, like a missile. I love your style. I wanted to come and say hi because it's very unique. The first girl I made eye contact, I got a number quickly and moved on. Women generally know what my deal is up front. It's about the physicality and I'm, I'm very touchy-feely right off the bat. So well, can I touch your cheekbone? Can we have a drink sometime? You'll bring the accent, I'll bring the cocktail. Sure. But I love your hat and your Thank smile. You. Do you live in the city? Chelsea. Chelsea. How about a drink sometime? Yes. Boom. I'm nice Paul. To meet you. Big hug. The big key there is to, to enter with confidence, keep it light and playful, get the contact information and then get out of the situation and I effectively did that. My mojo is pretty good. I, I, I got three or four numbers in about 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Two girls texted me so we have plans for tonight. Not bad. So it looks like it's on. Okay. All right. So your theory is get in, get the numbers and get out. It's not a theory. It works. Yeah. So that and that you've got a spreadsheet? I do. Okay. And so how many women are you? 132. Okay. Fewer for other stuff. Do you like women? I do, yeah. This was a quote you gave in an interview that I read. You said, she may look fit, sexy, and sophisticated, but after she's naked with mascara running down her face and she's trying to stuff her thighs into a pair of two small jeans at 2 a.m., you realize she's just another person trying to get by. I wrote that, yes. Yeah. So, and what... What exactly is offensive about that? I'm, I'm, in that, in that statement, I'm basically saying men and women are equal. We're, we're all just trying to get by in this world. And don't, as a man who's trying to learn a little game, don't put a woman on a pedestal and think she's untouchable. Everyone has their own foibles. Everyone has their own hangups. And let's, I think a lot of men's uh, insecurity is that they elevate the woman so much that they have fear of approach. <laughs> Being available at a drop of a hat is one, one element of being a good playboy. And six times in one night is the most I've had sex with a single woman. Two women in the same day. There's been some threesome type scenarios, but it's the most. I'm pretty much available to go at a moment's notice. Around New Year's, this stripper had like a window of opportunity. She came over and we had great sex. It wouldn't have happened if I had other obligations. Well, today we're attempting to explain the male ego and what happens when it gets what some people would call out of control. Paul wrote a manual, and he says if you follow his simple rules, you will definitely get lucky. Now, he has a definite technique here. Have you been working her during the break? Because I noticed you, you're big on eye contact, leaning in, touching, right. and I noticed you did all of those things. I think those are effective strategies, yeah. Okay, we decided to put Paul's dating philosophy to the test, so we teamed him up with Nardeep, who says that he's got absolutely no game. He just admits, he's I got no game when it comes to women. So we put an earpiece in Nardeep's ear so that Paul could give him directions. We then sent him into a crowded New York bar to see if Paul really knows how to get a woman's number without whining and dining her first. Let's take a look at what happened. We're going to go in here tonight. There's going to be groups of girls, twos, threes, drinking. So it's basically about a confident approach, open demeanor, a few witty things. Boom, we'll close it. Weighing in at 140 pounds at 5 foot 10 is Nardeep, uh, ready to go down into the lion's den, I guess, uh, with my coach Paul back there. And uh, we'll see how his tips work out. Hoping for the best. 
see sort of the uh, good or bad angel on his shoulder tonight. Guy, give him some tips. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Kind of like the coach, and he's a player on the field. His biggest liability is lack of experience and uh, confidence. I can take him to water. We'll see if he'll drink. Nardeep, you with me? Yep, I'm ready to go. Slowly make your way towards the other end of the bar. How are you guys doing? Sucker move. These girls seem to be just like using them for drink. I'm much faster. I'd try to get like four or five numbers from this place and be out of here. When there's a girl by herself texting, so I think that's a decent prospect. Pass the blonde, swing left now. You know the bartender to, cut, to lean in a little close, so it looks like you guys are friends or something. Kind of raise your hand like you're hailing a cab, like you want some attention here. Good. Now lean over to the girl and uh, say, what are you drinking? What are you drinking over there? Pinot Grigio. Having a little gin and tonic. It's like a summer drink. Gin and tonic's good all year round. Come on. Good work. Nice line. He's taking it on his own. Ask her what her name is. What's your name? My name? Nardeep. Nardeep? Yep, yours. Hey, Lynn. Nice to meet you. Nardeep's biggest challenge with these two women, the first one has shown not too much interest. She's pawned him off to the second. Now that he has a logistic problem, I'd say cut and run. He seems to be doing pretty well, but it, the conversation's kind of flattened out. The hard thing about the bar scene is like you engage somebody and then you're locked in for 10 or 15 minutes. That's why I do the street game. There's no, you're in and you're out. You're doing well. I like your, I like your body language, your positioning. Come on, now, now leave her, come around to the friend, the other side. Tap the friend on the shoulder and get the friend's attention. So what are you drinking? Pepsi Citron and Seltzer. Nice drink. Improvising. He's doing well. He's, he can improvise. He's, he's clever on his feet. These women are low energy, so they're not really good. So maybe spend another minute here and then move him on. Tell her that you might be meeting some friends that might have to leave pretty quickly, so can we exchange information? I'd like to take your number. I'm supposed to be meeting some friends later, so I might have to jet out of here, but if you'd like, I'd love to meet up with you later. You want to exchange phone numbers? Oh, sure. To be honest, I'll probably go home after this. Hey, come on, you're saying that now, but you don't know how the night's gonna turn out. Yeah, I like you it. Got a couple drinks in ya, you wanna have Don't push time. it, don't push it. Just get the okay, number, yeah. get the number. Let's Just get the number. numbers and we'll see where the night takes. Okay. All right. Well done. The trick to getting in New York City is to meet a woman quickly, maintain the intrigue, and get her back to your apartment. It's a controlled environment, and then it's basically escalating the situation until she and I are sexualized, and she's somewhat nude, and from there, it's biology. From a scale of one to 10, I think he's in the six, seven range. Come up, Nardeep, you did a good job. We're done here. Hey, good job. You've got four girls dancing around. This one's cute. Yeah. Nardeep, <laughs> I'm, he, he, he got his stars today. I'm very proud. <laughs> Okay, well, we put it to the test because Paul's written a 17-page manual called How to Get, well, I can't even say for air, in New York City. So we put it to the test with Nardeep because you say you got no game. No game whatsoever. Okay, did it work? Uh, yeah, I mean, it gave me the confidence to go up to, you know, these girls in a situation where I would normally be very intimidated and was able to talk to him. Yeah, so, yeah. so he said he was proud of you at the end. Were you proud of yourself? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was proud of myself in the fact that I was able to talk to them. You know, I mean, the bar, the club scene in New York is very difficult to talk to someone, especially when, you know, there's groups of girls and you find someone attractive. So I'd say, yeah, I'm proud of myself that I was able to go talk to them. I feel like now I'd be able to go talk to them. At one point people. he said, don't push it. You know, get, you get the numbers and get out. In fact, you said if you, if you get a low energy situation that's not working, you'll just walk off mid-sentence. That's right, yeah. Just like, because you don't want to waste any extra time. I've right? walked while a girl is talking to me. I walked out of a, uh, right, right past her. So, John, what do you think of this ego here? I think I'm running my game in Atlanta, and I say more power to him.